Well, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, communicating with your landlords from really from an operator or farmer perspective. Uh, give a little background on on the need for that, really, and and why we want to talk about it, and then just give a little bit of information on kind of some strategies uh, for better communication with your landlords. Um, so there's two pluses at the start of this presentation here. The first is they ask me for a nice mug shot there, so everybody gets to take a look at that. And the second is, this is actually my inaugural presentation of this particular material, so you'll probably be blessed with some awkward pauses and things like that as, as I look through my notes, since this is a, a little bit of a new uh, 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 subject area for me. But hopefully I do a good job, a uh, okay job of communicating the information here. Um, I actually work for American Farmland Trust. I've been with AFT for over 15 years. I'm based in Ohio. I actually also farm part-time. I'm originally from Dark County and, and farm in, in Dark County as well. So, and, and on top of that, uh, I also, for my family, take care of renting out uh, parts of the farm that the family my dad owns with a couple of sisters. Um, so have a little bit, of, little bit of knowledge about all those relationships and kind of what goes into that. Uh, so hopefully I, I speak from a little bit of experience here as well. Um, everybody knows times have changed over the past 20, 30, 40 years in agriculture. Um, landowners obviously have moved farther away from actually farming. Um, the acreage, you know, we're second, third generations away from the farm and landowners just don't know as much about the aspects of farming as, as they used to. And also, there's actually now many more women that are individual owners of farmland for various reasons. Um, there's also some other aspects that's probably a little bit more recent in the last 10 years or so, is that really authority on different subjects, farming included, kind of used to be granted you're an expert because of your education or other reasons. Uh, but now it seems like everybody is an expert with the advent, advent of social media, Facebook, etc. Et so everybody has an opinion about what you're, what you're doing. Um, and communication used to be much more formal. Um, again, with social media, communication is much more informal. And people can speak out much easier and have their voice heard. Uh, so so that, that is a change in, in how communication is happening. Um, a little background, talking about more women. Um, in the next 20 years, 70% of private farmland will change hands with the percentage of women uh, owning farmland going up. Actually, it's estimated that you know, women aged 60 to 80 could own as much as 75% of uh, farmland in the next 20 years. So you know, that may not come to fruition, but Communication, communicating with uh, women landowners is going to be much more important. AFT actually has been doing some work over the past three or four years uh, trying to understand um, you know, the, the, the importance to women of, and the relationship to their land that they own. Uh, we've, we've been doing learning circles uh, primarily with women, also a little bit with other non-operating landowners. Um, but talking about women non-operating landowners in particular, um, believe family and community harmony is very important. It's a little bit different than the way men think. Uh, think a farmer who rents their land as the expert and they want to hear from the expert. They crave knowledge about farming. Uh, but are, are often uncomfortable asking the farmer who's farming their land about what's happening on the farm. They are always interested in rental rates. They want to know what's fair, what's equitable, probably what the neighbor is getting paid. Um, and they're also concerned about chemicals, about what's actually happening on the farm and what the environmental impact is and many times don't realize there are options in the way that land can be farmed. And finally, <clears throat> they don't realize that they can actually help farmers implement conservation practices on their farm. 
they don't know that they can be part of that equation. Uh, but most importantly, you know, women landowners, through the work that we've done uh, with this research, communication is key. The more regular the communication is, the happier the landowner is. And the less communication, uh, the more likely is that that landowner is going to be unhappy if that farmer is not communicating with them. Uh, did anybody in here see the presentation by Rick Cruz this morning? It was over in the chapel area. Um, he was talking about conservation and the need for more conservation on farmland going into the future. And he actually, uh, a significant portion of his presentation talked about um, the need for conservation on rented farmland. And we know that, that conservation on, on whether it's owned land or rented land is very crucial. It helps profitability when you're increasing soil health or improving soil health and improves profitability. Um, much research shows that it improves resiliency as we just heard this last presentation about climate is changing a little bit. Being more resilient when climate is changing is very important. And also, it helps water quality. It helps uh, have us have cleaner water so we don't have to do as much treatment to drink it. We can fish and swim in it, all those things. But we know there are barriers also to getting conservation um, on rented land. Uh, so American Farmland Trust has some funding from the Great Lakes Protection Fund and we're working in a couple of different watersheds, one in New York and then one here in Ohio in the Portage Watershed, um, working with the Wood County Soil and Water Conservation District, where we're going to be testing some methods um, so that we can actually help bring landowners and their farmers together to actually have a conversation about, you know, being able to get conservation um, implemented on that land that the farmer would like to implement, but maybe he doesn't think he can because the, the landowner, he may think, or she may think the landowner isn't interested in doing more conservation. And actually having conversations occur between the landowner and the operator. So those couple of the things that we're actually doing, um, so we're actually going to be doing more kind of what we call learning circles with women landowners and non-operating landowners uh, to try to educate them about things that farmers can be doing on their farm and how they can actually help uh, get that additional conservation adopted on their farms. And then also from a farmer perspective, provide some tools, put together a toolkit. So this, this project is kicking off. So some of the things that we hope to do with, with these toolkits is one, do some evaluations with farmers to assess you know, what the environmental impact of the farming uh, practices they're using on their farm really are. So if they can communicate that to the landowners and show them, here, I'm doing certain practices and, the, and these are the environmental benefits that I'm providing. Uh, a couple of other things is, you know, communication tools and strategies, uh, how to work with their landowners um, to get some of the practices they like to do implemented on that farm. You know, things like, Maybe you can have uh, longer term leases because there's a, a longer term payoff for some of the practices you want to implement. And then also some technical assistance as well. So helping farmers implement certain practices on the farm. Maybe it's a farmer that's never done cover crops and wants to implement cover crops. How can we help them do that on their farm? So that's a few of the things that, that we're hoping to do with that particular project. Um, talking about... Um, just at the farm level. Farming, in a sense, requires really a, a social license. Um, more and more, there's certain things that the public um, expects, and sometimes the landowner expects. Um, but there's, there's three big things to kind of getting that license and maintaining that license. And, and it all evolves around that communication. So it's transparency, um, accessibility and communication. So I'm going to just give a little overview of those three big things. Um, and so some strategies actually moving forward about, about uh, improved communication. So the first is transparency. So actually 
you know, what's really important is operating in a way that is easy for others um, to see our actions and the why behind them. So we don't necess necessarily, a, a farmer doesn't need to share the, the how so much because some of that, you know, farmers have learned a lot of things over the years and it's not the, the intimate details that a landowner wants to know but it's the why behind the decisions you make. So I'm doing cover crops on my farm. I would like to do it on this farm I rent for you, from you. Here are the reasons why I would like to do it. And, and they can communicate those reasons. Um, but being transparent and communicating um, you know, why you want to do things. So there's actually kind of several different things in, in this transparency equation that are pretty important. So one is talking about your motivation. Again, that why aspect. Um, two is disclosure. You know, talk about all the, good thing, all the good things and bad things that can happen whenever you're doing certain things on the farm. Um, stakeholder participation and relevance. You know, asking the landowners what they think. What do you think about me doing certain things on your farm? Having them involved in that conversation from the beginning can really be helpful. Um, clarity. Speaking, you know, very clearly and very simply. Um, not giving acronyms or jargons, things like that. You know, just trying to be kind of a layman um, um, so that the, it's easy for the landowner to understand. And then finally, credibility and accuracy. So when you tell them something, it's true. You say, I did a certain thing, and you actually did that. Um, making sure that the, the landowner need, knows that you're going to be um, credible and accurate with them all the time. Talk a little bit about motivation. Um, on the screen here, this is really just an example. I guess you would call it kind of a value statement. Um, but, you know, an example of a value statement would be everything we do on our farm is for the health and betterment of our animals, our employees, our environment, our products, our community. You know, when you tell that to a landowner, you're, you're communicating your mo motivation and why you want to farm and maybe the way about you go about your business. So, um, to kind of further the discussion, I want, to, want you to think about the things that you do on your farm and also some of the things that might be controversial. So, you know, throughout this session today, we talked about manure spreading and, you know, the potential risk to spreading manure and not doing it in an appropriate manner. Tiling your fields. Um, that's very good agronomically, but there could be some... Um, downsides from an environmental perspective. Using pesticides. Um, you know, people think very differently on the use of pesticides. There can be many agronomic benefits, but again, there can be some environmental um, negatives related to that. And tilling the soil. You know, all this conference is a lot about, you know, conservation tillage and other practices like that. But, from your own perspective, are those practices defensible? If you can defend them and give the landowner good reasons for them, you should stand up and tell the landowner, this is why I'm doing things. I think this is the best for my operation. I think this is the best for your asset, your land. And I think this is the best way for me to farm your land. And if you are proud of those and you think those are defensible, you should stand up and defend them and tell the landowner about that. Tell them your motivations. Also, disclosure. Tell the good and the bad. So, I farm, I rent land from family members. I, I'm not in competition for that land, but I do provide a report to my aunts and, and parents about what I did on that land. I tell about the good and the bad. You know, here's the practices that I did. Here's the yields that I got. Maybe if I would have done something a little bit differently, I would have gotten better yields this year and it would have been more profitable and I could have paid you more rent. Um, again, I'm not in competition, but I, I feel like I need to tell the good and the bad of things I, I did well and things I did wrong and here's how I plan to change in the future. Um, so, and primarily, I'm sharing the agronomic and the economic outcomes. In the future, I hope to share a little bit more of the environmental outcomes. I know 
There's, there's tools and knowledge being developed there so that we can talk a little bit more about the environmental benefits that we provide as, as farmers and at the farm level, but hopefully I can do a little bit of the, more of that in the future. And that kind of communication actually leads to more acceptance and actually from the part of the landowner more informed decision making. So if they're thinking about who I might rent my land to, if they feel like they're getting good information, um, it's informed, it's helping inform them that they may be um, more likely to rent to land the, re the land to someone who's providing that them that type of information. Um, the next couple are probably fairly self-explanatory, but stakeholder, partici stakeholder participation. Ask uh, the landowner their, their um, you know, what they believe or what they think should happen on their farm. Make them part of some of those farming decisions. Um, you know, talk about some of the practices that maybe you would like to implement on their farm that you haven't been able to do or been afraid to do because you don't have a, an extended lease, things like that. Ask for their input, include them in the decisions, make them involved more in that process. And I guess by doing that you make them feel a little bit more important. Um, I think everybody feels a little bit more important when they're asked their, their opinion on a lot of things. And also relevancy. Um, put yourself in the landlord's shoes. You know, what does it mean for me? I guess when I'm thinking about, you know, talking to my to my family members, I think in the back of my mind, um, how am I helping to protect their asset? So if I'm doing certain practices on the farm that, that create, um, you know, better soil health, um, that's protecting the soil, uh, more biological activity, whatever, I'm trying to communicate, I think I'm improving your asset. I'm making your asset better over time. So hopefully that asset is worth more to them over time. So just try to put yourself in, in their shoes um, to think about the relevance of the decisions you're making. Um, another thing is clarity. I talked about that a little earlier. You know, don't use acronyms. They don't know what NRCS is. They don't know what EQUIP is. They probably might know what USDA is. Um, a lot of those different acronyms, they have no understanding. They don't know what a BMP is. Um, if you show them a soil test, they don't know how to read necessarily a soil test. Those numbers don't mean anything. So try to put things in simple terms so that they understand um, what you're trying to communicate and, and what's happening at, on the farm. And again, just the credibility and accuracy. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, if something happens on the, on the farm, take responsibility for the mistake. Apologize and say, well, here's how I'm going to correct that in the future. Here's the steps I'm taking so that mistake won't happen again. Maybe you spilled a little bit of fertilizer or something like that. It could even be minor. I guess I think back to last year, I spilled some 28 uh, in the yard and it burned some grass. My dad wasn't crazy about it. And I said, well, dad, I'll do it in a different place next year. So, you know, that's just a little example. Um, but, but, but be upfront and be honest with, with them. So number two of the big three that we talked about earlier um, was accessibility. Um, so operate in a way that uh, landlords have access to you. So maybe share your cell phone number that, to them, for them. So if they have a question about what's going on, they can call you easily. Uh, make yourself available. Uh, don't wait for them to contact you. Be proactive. If you think something might be an issue, call them ahead of time and say, you know, here's what I'm planning. Um, maybe invite them to walk out on the farm with you after the corn's up and show them, you know, here's what I'm seeing. Maybe show them some insects like black cutworm and here's why I'm going to apply an insecticide, something like that. You know, keep those communication lines open. Um, and then invest in goodwill. You know, go out of your way maybe to do something. I guess the old school example of this 
um, that I think about is, you know, oftentimes you may mow weeds or mow the ditches um, for your landlord. You clean out, clean out the, uh, remove the snow from the lanes in, in the winter. So those are kind of things that are, you know, being proactive. But there's a lot of other ways to be proactive as well. Um, this is just a, a list of a lot of different things you can do, uh, or many, many operators are doing, but be creative. You know, maybe certain things aren't comfortable for you, but uh, you know, things like sending out a newsletter um, to your landowners, um, you know, telling them about what happened this year, not only on their farm, but on your whole farming operation. You know, posting things on YouTube and saying, hey, here's, here's us far harvesting your field, or a clip from us harvesting your field this year. Just, just things like that. So be proactive, proactive in your communication to the landlord. And finally, you know, that third big thing is uh, communication, honest, open, and two-way uh, two communication. Keep those lines of communication open. Um, you know, that's what we try to do, or most of us try to do, I think, in our everyday lives with our spouses, with our children, with our parents, etc. So the way that you would operate with your family, you know, try to do that with your landowners. And again try to make an effort to understand and communicate shared values there's an interesting um, kind of factoid here and in some of the research that's been done communicating shared values is three to three to five times more important than sharing your skills your uh, competence or your expertise or science with, with your landowner, or consumer, or customer, whatever it is. So finding out what motivates you both and what those shared values are and communicating them can be much more effective than, than being the expert. Um, find that common ground, try to understand what those shared values are. And then, you know, I talked about kind of that old school, school approach previously. Um, I think that's the same way in, in how kind of social interactions are happening as well. So in the past, you know, we talked about research says, you know, we should do this or the, the way I'm doing things is uh, I've looked at research and it tells me I should do it this way. Um, or financially, this gives me the best result. But I think kind of the new form of communication and how people prefer to communicate and especially so from a millennial perspective, probably not many millennial landowners, but I think it's uh, um, um, good advice is, you know, this sounds important to you. Um, this topic might be important to you. So let's think about ways that we can work together to figure out how to best to accomplish our goals. So, you know, I'm kind of reiterating or um, going over things multiple times here, but I think that's the point is try to reinforce the idea that, you know, communication is very important. So, again, we have two ears uh, for a reason. You know, that's so we can listen. We can understand um, what our landlord or other people that we're working with are saying. Try to understand it and, and work together with them so that we can work together moving forward. The best defense is a strong offense. Be proactive. You know, go out of your way to talk to the landlord. Using those kind of three big ideas, transparency, accessibility, and communication. Um, and rented land, it's not business, it's personal. You have a personal relationship with the landlord. And again, communication is key. And that's really my presentation, so thank you.